What, dear folks, would GTA be without the moments in which we face a betrayal? Regardless of whether the traitors are our friends, employers, or random people, situations in which we are deceived cool the plot nicely every time. These moments are sad, but extremely important at the same time. Today, we will deal with Lance Vance, where it will turn out that the developers have made a very interesting path for this character. One of the main antagonists of the game did not want to betray, but was forced to do so by Tommy Versetti himself. Why? Well, we will learn more when presenting key situations and, in the summary of today's episode, in the meantime, let's dig into the topic. Our research, probably quite unexpectedly for most of you, will begin with the mission Back Alley Brawl. There, our task is to find out who may have been involved in busting the drug deal in Viceport. Note that Lance Vance suddenly shows up at this point at exactly the same time as Tommy. Like, he was just waiting for Tommy to be there. Who knows, maybe Tommy was followed by Vance from the very beginning after the failed transaction. This might be his only lead after all. The rest of the people involved died except Ken Rosenberg, who successfully holed up at the Harrison Hotel. Anyway, the second thing that stinks a bit here is the end of Lance's speech in the discussed mission and, more specifically, I will be watching you, Tommy. I'm gonna go see what I can dig up. I'll be watching you, Tommy. Do you remember at least one line of dialogue in this mission where Tommy told Lance his name? Probably not, because it simply did not appear. This makes it clear that Lance Vance has already learned a bit about the main character of Vice City. In addition, Lance's very statement has a blunt warning overtone, which shows that the man already had some plans for Versetti. Next, we will move on to the mission called Guardian Angels. For the record and context, this is a mission in which we do a favor to Colonel Cortez and accept a contract in which we must ensure the security of a transaction between Ricardo Diaz and the Cubans. Before that, however, we still have to go to the multi-story car park to get Kruger, which may just be useful to us. Everything seems normal until Lance Vance Dance suddenly, magically appears. This is puzzling, because while Lance certainly learned from Diaz that Tommy would be involved in the transaction, because Lance is working for Diaz after all, how would he know that Tommy would be going to a specific multi-story parking lot to get a gun before the deal? Once again, we're pretty sure Lance is stalking Tommy. Another mission that may catch our attention is Ricardo Diaz's quest called Phnom Penh 86. Just at ground level. So Quentin here! Quentin! Quentin! Tommy notes here that Lance Vance uses the name Quentin on the grounds that he was made fun of at school. In our opinion, this was not the main reason. We believe that Lance started using a false name for security reasons. Using a different identity for Lance, it would be harder to track if he would, for example, do something wrong and have a beef with other characters. Next thing that seems confusing is that Lance Vance kept mentioning that it was Ricardo Diaz who was Mr. Black's client. Lance says he has allegedly asked a few people in town and is certain that Diaz was behind the failed deal at the docks. Hey, I've been asking around. It's obvious that Diaz jumped the deal and iced my prop. But despite the serious accusations, and even though Lance was on the same team with Tommy, we don't know where Lance got this information from. Consequently, the credibility of these words is highly questionable and suggests that Lance does not fully trust Tommy. If anyone asks why we don't take this information from Lance too seriously, here's a simple example. It's as if we told you that we asked a few people in New York and it turns out that the police in this city take more bribes per year than their monthly payment is. It would simply be gossip and slander, nothing worthwhile. The only argument that could really defend Lance's statement is that he did not want to indicate the specific names of his informants for their own safety. But here, in turn, there is Lance's distrust, which we can rather rule out. After all, we soon find out that Lance is going to take out Diaz himself, which shows that Lance trusts us the most. If it had not been so, Lance would not have told us this, for fear that we would tell Diaz ourselves, for whom we are working as if it were not. Meanwhile, we come to the final mission for Ricardo Diaz called Supply and Demand, because we also have a bit to discuss here. The first thing is another accusation of Diaz coming from Lance Vance. So Tommy, we know it was Diaz busted our deal, so why in the hell are we running errands for him? Once again, Lance has absolutely no evidence that Diaz was actually behind busting the drug deal. What's more, that's not all, because the phone conversation with Lance after completing the task is even more interesting. I'm in the middle of something, what do you want? Nothing. Just to say, you know, look Tommy, we can do this thing, you and me, no problem, you know what I mean? 
During this phone call, Lance makes it clear that he feels disrespected by Tommy because he has no interest in him at all. In addition, Lance tries to convince Tommy to attack Diaz, although Versetti clearly told him some time ago that there will always be time for forceful solutions. After the conversation, it can therefore be quickly concluded that Lance does not take Tommy's advice seriously and does not care much about him, which will be confirmed anyway in the rest of the episode. Soon after, we suddenly receive information from Kent Paul that we should meet him. We go to the Malibu Club and then the mission called Death Row starts, where we are shown the effects of the indiscretion of Tommy's close friend. Lance finally attacked Ricardo Diaz alone, which did not end too well. We think he also wanted to prove to Tommy that you need to be careful while working with Lance, which would light a bulb in Tommy's head if he wanted to kick Lance out of common interests. As we can see, Lance's plan was at times really commendable. After these events, Tommy eventually attacks Diaz with Lance, killing him and becoming a major player in Vice City. The removed content from the game shows us another confirmation of Vance's intentions and that there is a small chance that we are wrong. Namely, after killing Ricardo Diaz in one of the deleted dialogues, Lance suggests in advance that together with Tommy, they will rule the city and the gang, although in reality, only Tommy is in power. After all, it was Tommy who killed almost the entire Diaz gang, and it was Tommy who from the very beginning was the mastermind behind this operation, in the meantime, using Diaz's work for studies for future business. Moving on, in the Shakedown mission, we see Lance emphasize once again that he is as highly ranked in the gang hierarchy as Tommy, which of course is not true. Lance mentions the gentleman must let the city know that Lance and Tommy's gang is shaking up all of Vice City. It's another attempt to use Tommy. After all, if we remember correctly, Tommy goes to take over the business in the mall. It is Tommy who invests in real estate and develops it. Lance is responsible for taking advantage of this. The next mission for Versetti's villa is no exception when it comes to problems with Lance Vance and what we can deduce from his behavior. This time, Lance assures Tommy that he will take care of the problem with the cafe refusing to pay the protection money. In fact, you can see that Lance has little idea and prefers to sip drinks with his friends. As a result, it is Tommy who has to deal with the problem, and on top of that, he receives a call from Lance who complains about his stake. Tommy, we gotta talk about stuff. What's the problem, Lance? It's you, my friend. I feel you're not giving me a fair slice. And more than that, you've been embarrassing me in front of the boys. I can't have that. Lance, it ain't like that. You've been making mistakes. Lance also does not like Tommy's behavior because he believes that he is wrongly shouting at him, ridiculing Lance in the eyes of other members of the organization. It even comes to the point that the man begins to threaten Versetti and suggest that he wants to leave. The situation is repeated in the last mission for the protection racket called Copland. We are talking about another telephone conversation with Mr. Vance. Lance is still pissed at Tommy for not getting a bigger cut from him. It is perfectly clear that the man only cares about this. Moreover, the conversation with Kent Paul, who warned Tommy that someone was going to rob him, was removed from the game. With the complaining of Lance in the back of Tommy's head, it was obvious that he would be the thief. The reason why this phone call was dropped could have been trivial. Like the deleted conversations in GTA San Andreas, this one would simply suggest how this situation will develop too clearly, thus it was simply removed. The penultimate moment in the story where we can have doubts about Lance is the mission Hit the Courier. We specifically mean the situation when Lance assures Tommy that he and the other gang members will be nearby in case Versetti needs to lose some heat. What is actually happening? Well, Lance is nowhere to be found and Tommy, once again, has to rely only on himself. Lance, seeing what is happening, namely that he is not at all useful and that his time in the gang is numbered, decides to embrace the last resort. He decides to plan a betrayal of Tommy when the perfect opportunity appears. And that takes us to the last point of today's episode, the mission called Keep Your Friends Close. Lance, seeing no chances for an equal division in the Versetti operation, tries to win the favor of Tommy's greatest enemy, that is, Sonny Ferrelli. Lance informs Sonny that Tommy has no intention of returning the money that was lost in the early game transaction, but plans to defraud him by handing over counterfeit money. All these situations perfectly showed that Lance wanted one thing from the very beginning, that is, an easy and abundant life. Tommy was to be a help in finding the person responsible for his brother's death and the gateway to a rich life. 
As a result, Smart Tommy didn't get caught up in Lance's games, keeping his finger on the pulse until the very end. Lance, seeing that Tommy could not be outsmarted, decided to make a deal with his friend's worst enemy, thinking that perhaps this way he would be able to achieve a high position in another organization as well as a large amount of money. Lance's behavior in Vice City Stories clearly shows what he always cared about and only confirms the belief that, after Vic's death, Lance still wanted exactly the same. That's all we've got. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you have any questions or reflections concerning GTA games, you can provide it in either the comment section or by writing an email to us. Feel free to share your opinion in the comments as well. We also encourage you to leave thumbs up or down after watching the video because it helps to choose over topics for new ones. See you soon!